It's a big day at Aqueduct, and we're here to fire back. Hello, everyone. Welcome to another edition of the Pick 5 Player Shows. I'm your host, Michael Pellerin, a.k.a. Horse Guy Mike. It's great to be back. I um, took a little bit of a break since the Breeders' Cup. I had three shows that week. Um, haven't really felt motivated to take any, make any shows since then, um, but huge card at Aqueduct. Um, ha- been nice to have a huge, little bit of a break. We have four great stakes coming up this Saturday at Aqueduct. Two big races for, for two-year-olds. Um, we got a two-year-old Phillies race and a two-year-old males race. So with that, let's dive right in to the first race. The pick five, starting in leg leg one, starting in race number six, we have an allowance going seven furlongs on the dirt, 10 horses. First horse I'm going to be going with is the number two horse, Power Seeker. Uh, Power Seeker, first off claim for Linda Rice. I have two horses in here that are going to be first off the claim for Linda Rice. That's the number two, Power Seeker, and the number eight, Dark Vector. This is a, an angle I like. Um, Linda Rice does have... A good record of first off claim, kind of getting these horses, running them back in a spot that's going to be work well for them. You know, maybe she's gotten in some trouble in, in the past, but she wins these races. And when you're making a pick five ticket, you're going to look for that angle, especially in an allowance race like this, where it's a, a fairly deep field. You got to find ways to separate. And that first off claim for Linda Rice angle is something I want to go with here. You know, Power Seeker was running fairly well. Two races, an 86 Brisnet, an 88 Brisnet. That claiming race in Keeneland, um, Gary and Mary West, Brad Cox dropped down, uh, maybe hoping didn't get claimed, but wanting a win, um, got claimed, got beaten by, by the other horse in this race, Dark Vector. So Linda Rice claimed both of them, running them back here on the same race, hoping we get one of them. So that's that covers the number two and the number eight, Dark Vector. Moving to the outside, number three, Overstep for Todd Pletcher and Irad Ortiz. This horse is kind of a monster. Um, this horse could be shaping up to be really good next year just hasn't raced since february i think it was injured you know something's happened and hasn't raced since february but back in february came off of back-to-back wins in january and february 100 brisnet figure won fairly well in its first race of the year winning by four lengths so todd pletcher irad ortiz great combo should be a good kind of allowance lower stakes level horse going into next year but great to see Great to see him off the uh, off the long layoff here. Probably would be favoritism easily, but the layoff's going to scare a lot of people away, scaring me away from from singling as well. Going to move to the number six horse, and that's Rocco Strong. Kendrick Carmouche gets the mount. This horse, I, I, I like the angle here that moved up from claiming into an allowance last out. 90 percent 90 speed figure, had 93 in that claiming race, two back. Um, ran on a sloppy track, got third back to back before that ran on a fast track, a one by four and four and a half lengths has the pedigree here by Shackelford. You know, you're looking for ways in an allow a deep allowance race like this. That's going to work. I think cutting back to that seven furlongs will help. He is kind of a mid pack runner with that late surge. So hopefully he's able to save some energy and move forward from there. And then we already talked about number eight. Dark Vector, who I like a lot, by Bolt Dioro, who was fantastic. Same same last race out at Keeneland, got an 89 Brisnet that race, two back in another claiming race, got a 90 Brisnet. So just kind of looking to find his footing here. Maybe the Linda Rice uh, trainer change will be what's going to take this horse to the next level. So four deep in that first leg as we move on. Going on to leg number two, race seven, grade two, Demo Zell. I hope I'm saying that right. I, I always pr- mispronounce it every single year. Uh, mile and an eighth on the dirt for two-year-old fillies. We've got three horses in here that I'm going to be keying in around. I do have a single later on in this race, and the next leg I'm only going two deep, so I do feel okay going three deep here. First one I want to talk about is Dolomite for Chad Brown with Manny Franco. Horse is coming off an absolutely monster uh, maiden-breaking win here at Aqueduct. At the end of October, one by six lengths with a 95 Brisnet. Um, really, really impressive performance at seven furlongs. Hopefully, she can handle the distance going further. Um, pedigree, you know, by Unified, nothing there really jumps out. You know, this isn't a gun runner. This isn't um, a Justify. So maybe, you know, there's not that much opportunity here from a pedigree standpoint. 
But on on paper, this horse looks great. That was a really impressive win. Um, drew clear of the field easily. So Chad Brown's feeling confident running her back here. We'll see how she takes to it. Next up, number three horse, Life Talk for Todd Pletcher and Irad Ortiz. This one is by Gunrunner. So has that really exceptional pedigree here. Um, running back from the Breeders' Cup Juvenile. This horse ran in the Juvenile, ran two back in the Frisette where both those races lost to Just FYI, who we know was an excellent horse. Um, and if Just FYI was in this race, she'd be, you know, one to nine. Um, she'd be that good. So life talk running behind that level of horse. You see Wilmot feeling confident, or sorry, you see Todd Pletcher feeling confident enough to run her back after shipping her all the way out to California, running her back here. I like that confidence. I like the experience she's had going around two turns. She's done it twice. Or, yeah, she's done it twice. So I like Life Talk a lot. Um, I think she's going to have a huge shot here. And then race to the outside, most of all, but for Wilmot. This horse, another impressive main breaking win at, at Aqueduct, similar to Dolomite. One by 10 lengths. Speed figure wasn't as impressive, 86 prison, but when you're ahead by you know 10 lengths, you're not really pushing it too hard. So by quality road, one of the, the best sires um, in recent history. So Wilmot, Jose Ortiz, Quality Road, coming off of a huge maiden breaking win. That was an off track too. You know, this horse ran at Saratoga twice, tried dirt on debut, and then switched to turf. Didn't really take to the turf at all. Um, and then first back was an off track, ran on that the sloppy track there, and I think it just loved it. So if this horse can get a fast dirt track with that experience, I think she's going to take to it really well. So those are the three I'm going to be going with here, the number two, the number three, and the number four. Moving on to leg number three, race eight, the gopher wand going one mile on the dirt. Going too deep here, I originally singled um, the number six gerrymander. I decided to include the number four as well, just because I had some budget to spend. Well, let's talk about gerrymander first. This horse last out, got a 100, uh, 112 Brisnet speed figure. I believe it won its race by 25 lengths which is incredible. It's uh, um, it's Secretariat-esque. Obviously, this horse isn't as good as Secretariat, but I, th I think she's absolutely incredible. And if she runs anything close to that, these horses won't catch her. The only other horse that I even liked in this race was the number four know-it-all, Audrey. And, you know, she had a 98 speed figure last out here at Aqueduct in a, in a stakes race. So stakes experience at this track kind of an off track you know maybe she she does well she has more of a front running style where she's able to get on the lead and kind of push on gerrymander has more versatility there so maybe know it all audrey gets to the front or sits just off gerrymander can either be on the front be in the middle who knows um i think one of these two wins and i think gerrymander is the most likely winner but i'm doing a little bit of coverage here as well Next up, we're going to be going to leg number four, race nine, the grade two Remsen going a mile and eighth on the dirt for two-year-olds uh, to Kentucky Derby prep. We've got a couple Chad Browns in here that I like. The number two domestic product is my first pick. And we've got Manny Franco, Chad Brown, another impressive maiden breaking win, 87 Brisnet, one by four lengths. And always interesting to see these Clar Claravich horses working on the dirt because obviously – you know, Chad Brown is is historically known as a, a kind of a turf trainer, especially with turf fillies. Clarevich usually sends him a lot of horses. They've got a great partnership going on there. And, uh, yeah, so when they see him on dirt, you, you know they're performing really well. And I think Domestic Product by Practical Joke is one of those ones that's going to be interesting here. Running back from that win at Aqueduct, um, definitely one I want to be including. Moving to the outside. Door knock for Danny Gargan and Luis Saez. Again, really impressive maiden breaking victory at Keeneland. I think a lot of people saw that in that uh, races leading up to the Breeders' Cup. One by six and a half lengths, 95 Brisnet by Good Magic, who's been kind of a, a red hot sire recently, had it, having a, a good progression of Derby, uh, Derby pedigree. So I think Door knock is definitely one I want to be including here. Moving to the outside, we're going to go with the number seven, Sierra Leone. Sierra Leone, another Chad Brown, 
This one not by Clarevich, so no conflict there with Jose Ortiz aboard. Only one race, and that was a maiden breaking win here at Aqueduct um, at the beginning of November. I think it was the same same day or the day after the Breeders' Cup. Um, wasn't like a hugely impressive maiden win. Got a really nice speed figure. Got an 85 and won by about a length. Nothing too impressive. Bobbled the start. So maybe there's something more in the tank. This, is, this one is by Gunrunner. So again, we've seen the Gunrunners do very well on the Derby Trail, on the Oaks Trail. So Sierra Leone coming off of a maiden victory. Chad Brown in New York. It's a great combination. You got to include and then moving to the outside, number eight, where's Chris? For Richard Dutro, he's just, ever since he came back from his suspension, um, he's been doing fairly well. He won the Breeders' Cup with White Barrio. So he's doing he's doing something right. And this horse won the Nashua here at Aqueduct by almost a length, got a 90 Brisnet speed figure there. So really can't discount a stakes win at this track with the same conditions. So... Those are the four that I want to be including, the two Chad Brown horses, Dornock and Where's Chris. So going four deep here in the Remsen. Hopefully one of these horses puts up a nice speed figure, and we've got um, a non-Breeders Cup juvenile contender for the Derby Trail that we can look forward to. And then moving into leg five, race number 10, we've got the grade two Cigar Mile going a mile on the dirt. I'm going to be singling and keying in on the number three, Senor Buscador. And this is a deep field, 12 horses singling in this one as compared to one of the other ones. I just think Senor Buscador is just really good. Um, he was in the Breeders' Cup and have that confidence to say, hey, you know, we didn't do well in the Breeders' Cup. But we're going to ship all the way out to New York and run in the Cigar Mile. This doesn't seem like just, a, you know, okay, let's run into this. It seems like this was always a plan, you know, having a plan, having an aim. Um, that cigar mile where it's more realistic, you know, ran the breeders cup. It was in Southern California. I think, I don't know if he got an automatic bid from his San Diego handicap win or not. I don't know if that was a, a breeders cup win and you're in, but he, he had a shot there. I didn't say he had a huge shot, but he had a shot in the breeders cup. I like that they took it, but I like it even more that they're running him back this quickly in another big race. Um, his speed figures are significantly better than everyone else in this field. I think he's going to enjoy the cutback a little bit. You know, he's been running at two turns for a long time. Uh, but if you look back to last year at Keeneland, he was going a mile, went there twice, won one. The other one he didn't really fire, and that was in the Breeders' Cup dirt mile. So he has way more experience than any of these other horses, way more class. His triple-digit Brisnet speed figures and buyer speed figures uh, speak for themselves. He's going against the, the best of the best. I think this is a significant class drop for him. I love the confidence from the trainer. I'm going to be singling Senor Buscador to finish my ticket off. So with that said, here are our selections in race number six. We've got two, three, six, eight. Race seven, we've got two, three, four. Race eight, we've got four, six. Race nine, two, three, seven, eight. And race 10, we're singling the three. Total cost, not $24. That's what it was before I added on that second horse in race eight. It's $48 for your 50 cent base ticket. So good luck to everyone at Aqueduct this weekend. Uh, follow along at Trust the Profits, at Horse Guy Mike. Let us know who your best pick is for this weekend in the Rams. And do you think there's a Derby or Oaks contender here? Um, comment down below. And good luck to everyone.